Thank you, Ben, uh, and thanks for your speech very much and for your introduction. I want to uh, also thank the organizers of the MIT Legal Hackathon, uh, to Daza Greenwood and, your, and his team at Civics and the hackers, uh, all of you for participating today. So my name is Mark Farrell. I am the supervisor from District 2 uh, here in San Francisco. Uh, just by way of background, I started my career as an attorney down in Silicon Valley after having gone to law school back east at University of Pennsylvania. Uh, I spent three years as a corporate attorney in Silicon Valley, then uh, became an investment banker here in San Francisco, so spent five years in, uh, in the finance world, and then started a venture fund with a few other partners. And in 2010, decided to run for office uh, for a number of reasons and was elected and have been serving in office since 2011 here on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. Uh, I continue to work at my venture fund uh, when I'm not inside of City Hall. And really my experience uh, before becoming uh, involved in the political world has really informed what I do quite a bit inside of City Hall. You know, whether you think about the issues that we work on uh, here in San Francisco relating to technology, um, Ben talked about, you know, a lot about open data and the open gov projects uh, that we're working on now. Um, but to me it's been really important and to also be a leader of the Board of Supervisors here in San Francisco to work on and advance open data and open government uh, legislation projects here inside of San Francisco. I will tell you right now across the country, especially with Councilman Kalos and other people, it is exciting to see the leadership that we're seeing from other cities and states throughout the country. And I think we're really at a unique opportunity in time where not only are people inside of government getting excited about it, we have hackathons like this happening. We actually, I will tell you, have venture money going into companies that are building on open gov projects and open data projects. We have venture funds that are forming just around open government. And I think this is a really exciting point in time, and so I hope you're excited to be part of what we're all trying to do today. So I thought I'd share with you two things that I've been working on specifically inside of San Francisco. <clears throat> the first was last year in September, our city started working with the Open Gov Foundation to open up and access uh, our city's laws. And so we launched something called SanFranciscoCode.org. And this was a civic engagement tool to bring our city's laws and policies in a more accessible and modern format uh, that can be used and reused and to allow our residents to really take a look at what, what the laws are on our books. You know, in San Francisco, we are experiencing an incredible growth in terms of our technology community, really becoming a, a global center of innovation. And from my perspective, inside of government, we need to do all that we can to bring that innovation to our residents. Uh, not just people that work in the tech industry per se, but the people that live their daily lives inside of our cities and see how that technology revolution can really shape their lives. And so through SanFranciscoCo.org last year, my office received a lot of feedback um, and one in particular, we had a constituent that left an email and a comment that uh, about one of our laws on our books uh, in San Francisco. And believe it or not, we still have a law on our books that says that the only thing we are legally allowed to have in our garages in San Francisco are automobiles. We can't have bicycles, we can't have strollers, we can't have baby toys, we can't have anything else. Obviously it's an outdated law, it doesn't make any sense in this world. Um, and so Gary, my constituent, left the comment and I agreed and became the first supervisor in the city of San Francisco to introduce law stemming from direct constituent feedback on this new platform. And you know, from my perspective, legislators across the country, we always talk about being responsive to our constituents and being held accountable. And this is a real tangible example where we actually had a law that was commented on through SanFranciscoCo.org, obviously an outdated and ridiculous law that we're now um, being able to change. And to me, that's something that really, if you think about getting the public to be more engaged with our civic process, that's exactly what we should be doing. Um, and so I actually launched, uh, after to build off the success of that, launched a partnership with the Open Gov Foundation called Reimagine, Reimagine SF. And it's a scholarship opportunity here in San Francisco for undergraduate and graduate students to take another look at our laws and really re-envision what they want San Francisco to be and to propose changes uh, to the laws that we have on our books. The scholarship opportunity is going to be for $1,000 each uh, for their uh, undergrad or grad school. It's not the most amount of money in the world, but it's enough to get people excited. Um, and I will tell you there are some interesting things that we've gotten feedback on, so hopefully I'll share with this group later on down the line some of the things that, uh, that have come out of it. 
But really, what I want to mention real quick to, to back up what Ben's saying, you know, what I've been doing lately as well is working on an open data piece of legislation, um, which I hope is of interest to everyone here. And I really need your help, and I know Ben needs your help to cross the finish line here. And what the goal of this legislation is, is to make San Francisco the first open legislation city in the country. It subscribes to the idea that legislative information should be treated as open data. So what we're doing is mandating that our city upload and host all of our legislation in machine-readable format that are consistent with uh, some of the open data standards we recently passed. And this motion is going to make our legislative data easier to use for constituents, for third parties, and also for outside developers who want to better interact with our legislative process and create tools and, and modern formats to really allow our residents to get engaged with our government. So we've worked with the Open Gov Foundation, the Sunlight Foundation, all both of obviously who are nonpartisan, nonprofit, national leaders in this movement, and advocate for government transparency at all levels. Um, from my perspective, this, this is going to allow you know these modern applications and platforms and developments uh, out of our city and information, and really again engage our residents. And just like Ben mentioned, I hope to utilize these tools and services to crowdsource ideas and input on policies that I want to put forward into the future. And by the time I'm gone from city government, that future legislators will be able to do. And I'm a, just a big believer that in City Hall we should be using technology and the services that it provides to interact with our constituents and on policy issues that matter to them. Um, and through this motion we can achieve that. So, you know, Council Member Kayla spoke a few minutes ago and challenged you to really help create uh, what we're, you know, trying to define as Democracy 2.0, an open platform that cities and states can use across the country, really as a format and a tool, and we're the ground floor right now, and so you really have an opportunity to be engaged here and to be a monumental part of what we're doing. And I joined Council Member Kalis in challenging you to help create this platform so we can keep modernizing our process. You know, it's a time we see across our country, certainly a lot in D.C., hopefully not in our cities as much when politics really become toxic, and we do have an opportunity to make things a lot better um, and make sure governments are more transparent and more accountable through this work. And we're not alone in this challenge. Uh, we're starting to create this opportunity across our country. I want to thank you for the work that you're doing and you're going to begin to do here today to really bring our government into the 21st century and make it part of our residents' daily lives. So thanks to all the hackers, uh, again to Dawes and his team over at Civics and the organizers of the MIT Legal Hackathon, and in particular to Ben, to Councilmember Kalos, thanks uh, for your leadership here. I uh, look forward to doing this more and more together and certainly want to turn it back to you and, and, and thanks for all of your involvement.